विदधाति पूर्व यो वै वेदाश्च प्रहिणोति तस्म तम दम बुद्धि प्रकाश मुमुक्षुर्व शरणमहम प्रपद्ये ओ शांत शांत शांति ओ नमो ब्रह्मादिभ्यो ब्रह्म विद्या संप्रदाय कर्तृभ्यो वंश ऋषिभ्यो महद्यो नमो गुरुभ्य सर्वोपलबरहित प्रजान धन प्रत्यगर्थो ब्रह्मी वास्म ब्रह्मी वास्म वेदाताथ विभासकाय गुरव शांता संयासी नानावादीन घेन्द्र संघपवय योगींद्र वंद्या च मोहध्वाकराय भगवत्दिभ्रते तस्म भाष्यते नमोस्त सतत पूर्णा बोधात्म when it comes to one becoming miserable sad or in grief then naturally one of the reasons that we can associate for this grief sadness or misery is due to the animate objects around us and by objects i do not mean uh, you know lifeless things because it is animate conscious living beings those people around us could be now people who are actually living or could be people who had been living which means either they are gatasu or agatasu asu means pranas the vital breath which because of which we are able to conclude the person is living he is alive either we we grieve because of people who are still living agata shiva <coughs> namaha sorry who are still living or people who are whose asu whose pranas whose breath that vital breath has departed 
Now over here, this is common and this is not even questioned. <sighs> but the Pandita, those who are wise people, it is said they do not grieve. Then naturally comes a question, are both these reasons because of people who are alive or who are dead? Do they do not grieve? Do they do, they do not become sad on account of any of these people? And we say, absolutely not. Gatapranan agatapranan those whose pranas have anagata ha gata pranan agata pranansha whether they are living or they are not living the, the wise man does not grieve because of anything around him he there is no reason which can be justified as a misery for him for us, not having sufficient sugar in our cup of tea or coffee is also a reason for us to be sad, to become miserable. But none of those reasons are applicable and grief cannot be justified. Misery cannot be justified. Now about these people, he grieves because he finds that these are the people whom I love. I am miserable because the person whom I love has died or maybe he will die. So the possibility always exists. And that possibility, its possibility itself is good enough to make life insecure, to make the person feel insecurity. Thus, this is what is what is there with a common person. But when talking about the wise man, Sri Krishna says, the wise man does not grieve, does not become sad because of any of them. Those who are gata pranas or agata prana. Question comes, we do not become miserable for all people because there are thousands of people who are dying every moment. We do not become sad for all of them. Or we do not even become insecure because of the possibility that thousands of people would be dying. But we are sad only on account of those people with whom our association is there. An association of love is there. There is a bond of affection. And for those people, definitely, one is bound to become sad. <laughs> then this situation is analyzed in just one line. Bandhutvena kalpitan dehan na anushochanti. The commentator over here says, because you see those people as people who are bound to you and you are bound to them with a with a with a with a with a string of love and therefore they are your bandhu in some way related to you thus one becomes sad for those people who are related bandhu twena they are related to 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 you then are you really becoming sad for because of those people? Because then we say no, because this person whom I love, 
is no longer there, which means has he is dead, then we are referring to that body. What are we referring to? To the body, which is subject to destruction. So now this body is going to be cremated, buried, or in some way now going to be not available for me. And therefore, these are the, and this body, this is the person whom I love. He is my brother, my sister, my father, my mother, so on and so forth. Bandutvena kalpitan. And they are no longer there. So now we are going to tell you something about a wise man. What has he discovered? That he does not grieve for those bodies which are bound for destruction and which are destroyed or which are bound for destruction, which means to, to die. Te Panditaha, those people are called as Panditaha, who vichara janya atma tattva jnana vantaha. Those people in whom the knowledge about the true self, about the reality has dawned. The knowledge has dawned. The knowledge about the reality has dawned. How did this knowledge, how did this knowledge even come to them? And the answer is, vichara janya atma tattva jnana. That this knowledge comes through vichara, which means through vivek through discrimination of, of one trying to understand what is real, what is not real, what is the self and what is not the self. Now, please understand, this is just as for everything we employ discrimination. Even when you go to the market and buy anything from the shelf, you, you pick up that product and look at its expiry date. Is, is it something that should be purchased? So not only the date, you look at the product, you look at the ingredients, you look at uh, its price, and there are various factors. And based on that, now the discrimination comes to you. Should it be purchased? Should it not be purchased? Should, it, should I take it? Should I not take it? There is discrimination everywhere. And this is the Vivek, this discrimination. But discrimination about what is being spoken over here? Discrimination of what is the self and what is not the self. This understanding and when it becomes clear that what is the true nature of the self becomes clear now the person will not be affected by the events and situations outside. Nanushochanti. Because we have whatever are these bodies. Now over there, one has imagined a bond of affection over there. And therefore, now through that bond of affection, when those bodies are destroyed, one becomes sad. But this does not happen. This does not happen to this person who has discovered the true meaning of self. Ye panditaha vicharajanya atma tattva jnana vantaha gata pranana gata pranaishya bandutvena kalpitan dehan na anushochanti. Why does that happen? Because of two reasons. One is because that knowledge now has allowed him to see 
not not just that you know uh, that the atma is satyam but he also sees that whatever is anatma is mithya is only an appearance please look at that atma is satyam that this is the true nature of the self that this self is pure consciousness and how is what is the nature of this pure consciousness that i am it is unaffected by the time it is infinite it is limitless and therefore not limited by time space attributes etc there is no condition which can make the self a small little entity thus discovering this is what is the nature of the self then that which is bound by time which is limited which is small which is conditioned by time space objects attributes functions etc what is the status of these things if atma is satyam is true then what about if this is the reality about the self then what about that which is not the self and here it comes to him as this the whole entire range of anatma is and only an appearance it is mithya so if the person if this wise man is not absorbed in samadhi for him even when he looks at this world he may he would be very much functioning in this world and yet for him he knows it is mithya it is something like we watching a film on the screen so you see see, see the protagonist the antagonist you see everything that is happening over there and yet in spite of knowing and enjoying that film we are very much aware that it is only an appearance it is seen so you you look at it you enjoy and yet it does not leave her it does not make you feel that this is true so even if a person dies on the screen in that film one does not grieve yes one can see but it does not knowing the reality has made him free it has made him free thus avyuthan samaye pratibhase pi mrishatven nischaya this is the nischaya this is what he what is his nischaya nischaya means a firm understanding firm understanding is called as nischaya so understanding that knowledge till it really becomes firm with certainty it cannot be called as knowledge because if it is it is infected by 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 instability by uncertainty it will not be called as knowledge knowledge means there is certainty and therefore nischaya is there nischaya goes along with knowledge certainty goes along with knowledge and so now that understanding is firm that this entire range of anatma padartha is only an appearance now in the state of samadhi what happens in the state of samadhi the anatma that what is not the self is not even seen not even experienced and when it is not seen or not even experienced there is no question of of being affected by anatma so he is not affected during the state of samadhi a and in the state 
where he is still functioning in this world, this world that the anatma does not affect him because there is a nishchaya, the, the knowledge is certain, I have a firm understanding that this entire anatma padartha is only an appearance. Thus, Arjuna, please look at it. Pandita, the, the, the wise man, does not grieve. Okay. <coughs> he does not, he does not grieve. Furthermore, now in the 12th shloka, let us recite this shloka and then look at its meaning. Natve vaham jatunasam Natve vaham jatunasam Natvam neme janadhi paha Natvam neme janadhi paha Nachaivana bhavishyamaha Nachaivana bhavishyamaha Sarve vayamataf param, Sarve vayamataf param. Natu eva aham jatunasam kadachat. Hey, there is no possibility that I wasn't there, that I was not there. And not only that me, but even you and all that you see as these kings and soldiers over here. Natvam na ime janadhipaha. So there was no time in the past when you were not, I was not there, you were not there, or all of us, all these kings and soldiers around you. Because now they, so, so now you cannot say that, you know, there, uh, these were not there. And therefore, now in future, they also still may not, would not be there. And their absence is what will make me miserable. Not that, that they will also not be there in the future, which means there is the, that, that whatever it is, is unaffected by time. That which is now appearing as all this multiplicity is not affected by time. That what is affected by time is only an appearance. And what is it that is affected? This multiplicity of people, this entire duality is what is what is affected okay tatra sthula sharirad atmanam vivektum nityatvam sadhayati now in order to understand what is the true nature of the self bhagwan shri krishna the teacher now initiates the process this is this is the process of discrimination which the teacher has now initiated over here in the 12th verse. What is it that he wants one to see over here is that the idea that the, the self is this body, that this body is real, is, has to be, so now we have this twofold her misunderstanding over here that this I am this body, and I am anitya. Okay, what what is it that this that the, the body is real and I am the body and it is anitya. So now this understanding is this misunderstanding is rectified. How does the how does the teacher go? He says, Natu eva aham. 
न तु एव अहम जातु न आसम इति हा अहम जातु न आसम इति न देर वॉज नेवर अ टाइम वेन आई वॉज नॉट देर देर वॉज नेवर अ टाइम वेन आई वॉज नॉट देर देर वॉज नेवर अ टाइम वेन यू वर नॉट देर there there was never a time when all these people were not there so now all whatever is referred by all is one thing and that which appears as all is another thing and therefore there is a discrimination which needs to be done over here okay <laughs> there is there is a need to understand the distinction just as the the rope appears as the snake the shell appears as the silver snake is an appearance but the rope is a transactional reality the snake is only an appearance but the but, uh, but the rope is a transactional reality now to understand the distinction between what that what is the nature of the snake and what is the nature of the rope snake is an appearance but what is appearing as the snake the rope itself appeared as the snake so that which appears as this multiplicity is definitely different from the appearance so that which appears is different from the appearance what is the nature of appearance that it comes and goes it is subject to time this entire multiplicity which is there which is experienced now what what happens to it it is something that is subject to time which means that it it will be born it will be destroyed it will be changing it will be modified and so time is bringing about time rules over here but that which is which is not an appearance but up, but it appears that 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 very substratum is not influenced by the time so there is there is a distinction which needs to be seen okay and this distinction because one is not and this distinction is how seen in the sense it has to be understood and how will it be understood it will be understood only through your faculty of intelligence this intelligence is called as viveka to distinguish and see to understand is viveka over here and because one does not have this viveka he confuses that what is real for the appearance he 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 confuses so that what is real for that which is mithya and this confusion is the basis of all the dukham this confusion is the basis of all the dukham so how does what is the remedy for the problem of dukham the remedy is understanding distinction understanding and as much as there is going to be clarity to that degree there is going to be freedom from misery okay to the degree that there is going to be one is going to have the clarity there is freedom from misery so freedom from misery is not a promise where one says that you know 
we promise you freedom from misery by going to the heaven that there is then how how different is it from just saying that there is a promise of freedom from misery if i marry the girl this particular girl that i'm infatuated with if i marry her i will how is that going to be different so this is all the rest of the things where there is a promise which means that it is only a speculation it is only a speculation of freedom from misery over here now vedanta the upanishad shows you the bhagavad gita shows you what that freedom from misery absolute freedom from misery is not something which will happen in time or in some different place but it is because that misery itself is a product of misunderstanding and therefore all that one needs is clarity of understanding just this clarity of understanding which in different words is discrimination or knowledge is what is required and in order to have that knowledge how is that knowledge had which are a janyam that knowledge is generated through this process of analysis which are a janyam and therefore now we are initiating this process of discrimination of analysis how do we do that to understand what is the nature of the self because self is already understood by us as i am this body i am a man i am a woman i am beautiful i am ugly hmm i am healthy i am not healthy i am sick so on and so forth i am the doer i am the experiencer this is what one has understood about i and that is what needs to be clarified there is i but is the true nature of the self this body or is the true nature of this self the 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 experiencer and the doer or is the true nature of the self that which he is free from all this conditionings okay we have to see that therefore now over tu shabdaha dehadi bhyo vyatirekam suchayati now natu eva aham that the two word is there the two two means but two means but like you know we have a whenever we have to have a clause in a sentence that i will have tea but without sugar so definitely i will have tea or i will have coffee but without sugar that that it it is it is it is showing a clause that one knows the self but how <laughs> it is said tu shabda ha deha de bhyo vit vyatirekam suchayati it indicates it indicates what the difference the difference the distinction okay distinction of the self from the body etc physical body etc tu shabdaha deha dibhya ha its distinction of the self from body etc etc will have what etc means everything which is understood as i but in reality is anatma everything that is presently understood as i 
presently it is understood as I, but it is Anatma. How, sir? How? Because huh, anything which can now be called categorically as something which is drisham, that something which is seen. Now that what is seen is different from the seer. This is this is the, this is where we begin. That what is seen is different from the seer. The body body is seen seen in the sense one knows the body changes, the body grows, the body deteriorates, and eventually the body is destroyed. One knows this. So it is seen, body is something that is seen. Even the pranas are seen because the function of the pranas, the coming and going of the prana is all seen. Therefore, prana is also not the self. The mind, the intellect, all these, even including the ego, the idea of one being good, bad, beautiful, superior, inferior, all these ideas about oneself are also anatma. The ego is also something which is seen. And therefore, that what is seen is not the seer. It is not in the nature of the seer. So thus, that what is deha uh, It is what, what is the nature of the self then? Then the nature, the self is something which is distinct from body, etc. Now, body, etc., all these things you can put over there. And the Panchakoshas, all the five sheets are, are there. Deha Dibhyaha Vyatire Kam Suchayati. But what has indicated this in the present verse? Just the presence of the word Tu. Ha parantu kintu like that. That this that the, the presence of the word tu has indicated suchayati. It, it, it indicates, it suggests the distinction of the self from body, etc. Tu shabdaha deha dibhyo vyatirekam. Suchayati. Okay. Now, what happens further? Yatha aham itaha purvam chatu kadachit api. Na asam iti naiva. Then Shri Krishna makes it, uh, he goes, uh, becomes a little lenient in his explanation. Because, you know, in the very beginning, how the process cannot become very intense. No, it has to be. It has to be slowly, huh, slowly. Huh, what do they call the fuel has to be provided? Ime ha yatha, just as I am. Itaha purvam, I was there before, even before. Purvam, itaha purvam. Here before I was there. Kadachitapi no asamiti naiva. There was not even a possibility that I was not there. This possibility is also not there. So aham asam apitu and so also. Huh? Tathapi, Tvamasi, Tvamapiyasi, you were also there. So also, you were also Tvamapi, Asihi. So you were also there. Ime Chanadipa Hacha Asan Eva. 
So also these kings and soldiers who have occupied this entire battlefield for whom you seem to be grieving, all of them were there even before. Okay. Etena Pragabhava Apratiyogitvam Darshitam. A very important principle is, is revealed over here. And that principle is, look at that. Now we will, to understand that principle, we will use an example of a pot. Hmm. There is a clay pot. So before the clay pot was created, the clay pot was absent. Hmm. So the clay pot was absent before the creation of the pot. Then after the pot was created, the pot now cannot be said to be absent in time, but you can always say there is still absence of the pot in another place. If the pot is here in Rishkesh, in Swamiji's room, it is not there in Delhi. Yeah. So the pot is there in the time. It is there, but it is not there elsewhere. So even after the pot is created, absence can still be associated with the pot. There is earlier absence, pragabhava, prior absence. When is the prior absence? Before the pot is created. Now, after the pot is created and is there, yet we have a possibility of associating absence along with the pot. We have the possibility of associating absence with the pot where the pot is not there in the Delhi, in Delhi. The pot is not there in Delhi. Pot is there in Rishikesh, pot is not there in Delhi. Then after, the, there is a third possibility how we can have absence associated with the pot. That the pot is created and it was, it is there now, but if the pot is broken, okay, if that pot is broken, now can you still say the pot is there? There is absence of pot. But this absence is not the absence which is a prior absence. But this is an absence which is a latter absence. Posterior absence. It is a posterior absence. And Shri Krishna Bhagavan is saying that none of these absences can be associated with something that is real. Okay. None of these absences can be associated with Atma. Let us put it clearly like that. <clears throat> Otherwise, <clears throat> it will become a little difficult. So I would, all of you are just paying a little more attention. Which absences? Now we have seen three absences, right? Uh, absence in time and absence in space. Absence in time is of two kinds. How is it? prior and posterior. An absence in space is, which means even if the pot is there in time, but in another, at the same point of time, in another place, the pot can be absent. But with Atma, with the self, Absence can never be associated. There is no possibility of associating absence with the self ever. 
is it true with the body the body definitely has a date when it came into existence even if you do not consider the birth coming out of coming out of the womb of the mother as the birth as the creation of the body but the body started getting formulated created growing etc once when you know the, the 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 chromosomes from the mother and father got together rajavirya sanyogena okay it got from that but at before that point before the sperm cell and the egg cell got together there was nothing like this body so there is absence of the body okay there is a prior absence associated with the body there is later posterior absence associated with the body and also absence in the space if the person is in rishikesh he is not in haridwar if the person is in delhi he is not there in mumbai if the person is there in the kitchen he is not there in the bedroom if the person is inside the house the person is not outside the house so ab absence in reference to the space is there with the body but that which is the self with the self the absence can never be associated with this is the principle and therefore that what is the self is distinct from the body not just body body etc deha dibhyaha vyatirekaha there is deha dibhyo vyatirekaha distinction over here and what are you grieving for saying that there is absence of what so obviously you are grieving for the bodies and then so grief cannot be there for atma because absence of atma is never going to be there is not there for the atma absence is not there and your grief is there on account of absence which is not applicable to atma then what about the body what about the body to which this absence is associated and therefore my then if i i am not grieving for atma i am sad because this body is going to be destroyed or is destroyed and therefore I, is it not so over there about the body etc what is the what is the what is the status of these uh, uh, of that what is not the self body etc the status is that this anatma padartha is only an appearance and for that which is an appearance there cannot be any grief for that which is an appearance there cannot be any grief so grief cannot be there for atma grief cannot be there for anatma then grief therefore does not have any justification grief does not have any justification why a grief why does this grief why does this sadness dukkham has to be there na anushochanti pandita therefore those who have understood what is the nature of the self o arjuna these wise people do not grieve okay this is the this is the thing and therefore 
ಅತಃ ಕಾಲತ್ರಯೇಪಿ ಸತ್ತಾಯೋಗಿತ್ವಾನ್ ಆತ್ಮನ ನಿತ್ಯತ್ವೇನ ಅನಿತ್ಯಾದ್ ದೇಹಾದ್ ವೈಲಕ್ಷಣ್ಯಂ ಸಿದ್ಧಂ ಸು ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ನೌ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ is uh, cannot be associated with any of these absences therefore atmanah nityatvena therefore we can definitely say atma is timeless not conditioned by time the self is unconditioned by time and therefore is distinct from body mind complexes and therefore anitya because this body mind etc is something which is bound by time modified by time transformed by time and destroyed in time and therefore this body etc he is that is what is conditioned by time and therefore atma is distinct from body etc dehad vailakshanyam siddham natvevaham jatunasam natvam neme janadhipa no chaiva na bhavishyamah sarve vayamatah param the principle is now established that this atma is distinct from body etc a another thing is that grief cannot be there for atma grief cannot be there for anatma and therefore grief does not have any justification does not have any place and yet the grief is there then the reason for grief is only because one does not know what is the true nature of the self and the true nature of that what is not the self not knowing is the cause which means the cause of grief is nothing else other than ignorance this is what is established let's see more of it when we meet next om purnamadaha purnamidam purna at purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಓಂ ಆಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷಿಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ವೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿ ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಮೂರ್ತೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆಲ್